Sooner Nation, we are back, and we are a couple days away from a junior day on January 27th for Oklahoma. We're going to dive into the list of visitors here on Thursday, but wanted to bring you guys a couple of quick recruiting updates because I know there have been some predictions, some things not going in Oklahoma's favor, and Oklahoma fans might be sitting here asking themselves what's going on. No need to fear. Oklahoma's got a lot going on. We got to talk about an elite prospect that Oklahoma offered. Things are heating up pretty quickly. Before we do that, guys, I need to hear from y'all. So make sure you're joining the discussion, jumping down in the comments below. And if you guys haven't already, make sure you hit that like and hit the subscribe button. 60% of you guys that watch my videos, you come back the second time, the third time, the fourth time, but you're not subscribed. So just check down there. Make sure you're subscribed. It really helps me out on the push to 10,000. But we're going to start with the most recent offer for Oklahoma or one of the most recent offers for Oklahoma. I can't say the most recent because there's been so many. The defensive lineman, Trent Wilson. And this might be a new name for a lot of you guys. You might not be super familiar with it. And let me tell you, Trent Wilson at 6'3", 270 pounds, he's a dude. And he recently announced a top eight for Oklahoma. And you're looking at the list, Florida State, Ohio State, Florida, Penn State, A&M, Maryland, Tennessee, this is a pretty elite list of teams you're going to have to go up against in recruiting. And obviously, Ohio State, the defensive line of Godfather recruiting. Larry Johnson's out there. Oklahoma hasn't had a whole lot of success recruiting against Ohio State. But guys, let me tell you, this is a prospect that if you're Oklahoma, you're definitely going to want to continue to pay attention to, and Oklahoma fans are going to want to potentially add this guy to their list. Now, as you guys see the film here for Trent Wilson, and you guys see what he's absolutely made of because <laughs> the dude, he's going to be a monster in the backfield wherever he ends up. Uh, Trent Wilson is a guy from Upper Marlboro, Maryland. He's currently ranked as the number 110th player in the 247 composite rankings. On three, has him as the number 26th overall player, which would technically make him a five-star. So Oklahoma... They're getting in there. They're trying to push. And you would imagine that Trent Wilson's services, uh, they're going to be wanted by a lot of teams across the country. So uh, he transferred to St. Francis Academy ahead of his junior season. Uh, he was a max prep sophomore All-American second team selection and helped St. John's to capture its second strength or second straight uh, WCAC title. And like I said, was recently offered on the 23rd by Oklahoma. So we talked about the defensive line class in 2025 just not being like the most elite of elite defensive line classes. It's not like super deep. But if you get a guy like this on campus and you compare him with what you've gotten in the 2024 class, as an Oklahoma fan, you would feel really, really good. And they might be saying, Preston, why are you excited for Trent Wilson? If Oklahoma was just named in his top eight and just offered him, well, one, for that example, right? They just offered him on the 23rd, and he just dropped his top date, meaning Oklahoma made it in there with, like, days to spare before he dropped that top eight. Additionally, talking to a couple sources, he just recently started talking to the OU staff a couple of weeks ago, and he's already built a relationship, and it's a pretty good relationship with Todd Bates. He's never been to Oklahoma, but he's going to be here on March 9th, and, you know, if you've been paying attention, that's going to be another date where Oklahoma tries to get several more 2025, maybe even some 2026 guys on campus. So we'll have to pay a little bit more attention there. But going on and looking at a couple more guys that you guys might have seen some predictions flow for, Deshaun Brain. And I know a lot of people are kind of scratching their head because there has been a lot of talk about maybe Oklahoma being in a really good position. Uh, he is the 6'6", 225-pound tight end out of Derby, Kansas. We're still digging a little bit into this one, but it is interesting to see that Oregon is going to be making a push. And, I mean, Dan Lanning kind of being from this area of the United States of America, right? Being from this area, wanting to recruit it well, 
Oregon definitely has a need at tight end. You would imagine they'd probably want to take two out of this class. Uh, Deshaun Brain being one of the most highly coveted and highly touted tight ends in the country, uh, Oregon's going to make a pretty big push there. So, additionally, you all saw Caden Knight and decommit from Vanderbilt. And this had a lot of Oklahoma fans excited because if you are familiar with Caden Knighton, we've had him here on the podcast. We've had the interview. We've looked at his film. Caden Knighton is actually a pretty versatile uh, elite athlete kind of flying under the radar though, across the country because he plays in Winniewood, Oklahoma, which you feel like probably works against him more than it helps him. But dude's putting up big numbers out there and he's got offers from USC Vanderbilt, SMU. Uh, he's got offers from like UNLV, North Texas, UTSA, but he's also got some other Power Five offers like Michigan State, Colorado, Houston. So, to currently at this exact moment, we're going to debunk this as I'm recording this video. Currently on a Wednesday, on January 24th, he does not have an offer from Oklahoma. He does have a visit currently scheduled for February 3rd. That is when. Potentially, you could see an offer drop for Caden Knighton. DeMarco Murray might be upping the ante here. And uh, I'll tell you this. The running back position for Oklahoma in 2025 is pretty interesting. You've got Torrey Blaylock, which we've talked about here on this podcast. We've even done a video on him. Uh, he's going to be out here uh, for the junior day. His brother, who is a 2027 DB, will be here as well. Uh, Michael Turner Jr., a guy that we saw at the BV... Uh, camp like again another prospect that Oklahoma's kind of been pushing for like how many running backs does Oklahoma take in this class do they only take one do they take two I think a lot of it's going to depend on hey does anybody leave to the portal does like a Gavin Sawchuk end up going to the NFL draft if he is putting up just a really good season like what does that running back room look like towards the end of the season? I think the staff will know a little bit better, but right now it's looking like there's only going to be one spot. And if Caden Knight gets that offer, you would imagine that spot will fill up pretty quickly. But also, I mean, hey, since he's in state, they could also try to give him one of those preferred walk on packages, right? You know, where, hey, we'll take care of you and we'll make sure your school is paid for, give you a little bit of money up there too, as well. So, Caden uh, Knighton, one that you want to potentially watch, be here on February 3rd. Additionally, we got Michael Fasusi. Now, a lot of people are, I, I don't want to say freaking out because that might be the wrong term, wrong word, but a bunch of people saw that Michael Fasusi went to Missouri and they kind of were like, oh, he had some really, really good things to say it, it, from where it was in Oklahoma, Texas battle. Are you saying we're going to integrate Missouri into it? And Oklahoma fans, I understand y'all aren't too fond of Michael Fasusi. He's a composite five star, a guy that is going to be highly coveted, and a guy that Oklahoma fans really want. You know, I have a prediction in for Oklahoma to land him out of Louisville, Texas. His teammates, Jaden Hardy, that could help you out a little bit. Uh, listen, you've got some of the best offensive line recruiters across the country going in on Michael Fasusi. I don't think this is over yet. I know a lot of people are going to be interacting with the Mizzou fans on Twitter. It's okay, guys. Let this pass. He's going to be back here at Oklahoma, probably in that March time frame. He'll be back during the season two. I'm confident of it. And I'm still confident that Michael Fasusi will end up being a Sooner. So no need to worry there. Don't freak out. But Beaton Bo's doing his thing. Michael Fasusi is going to take his time. He's going to see the landscape around him, and he's going to make a decision from there. Yeah, a five-star offensive lineman. It's going to be a dramatic recruitment. That's just how these are going to go. Oklahoma fans need to get used to it. All right, guys, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that like, hit that subscribe button. If you haven't already, join the discussion. Jump down in the comments below. Give me some of your thoughts, whether it's on Trent Wilson, Deshaun Brame, Kate Knighton, Michael Fasusi. want to hear from y'all. So join that discussion. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that like and hit that subscribe button.